Hey guys. Good morning. No, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the guys on the YouTube. Hmm. I really want to make more videos about mental health. I don't want to do it to make you guys feel sorry for me. I don't want your sympathy and pity. My goal is to be open, to help others, or to explain, like make people understand what is going on inside the head of a person who is suffering with the depression or anxiety or an eating disorder or a personality disorder because yeah that is actually my case for some of us the anxiety and depression is just a symptom of what lies underneath i also developed a eating disorder as a way to cope with all my um, difficult emotions you can't get well from that, but it's it's hard work. And I'm definitely better. Definitely. Much better. Maybe I should get out of bed. I should probably get back to what I was really going to talk about today, which was my mental health issues and a specific diagnosis of personality disorder. It's a very serious uh, diagnosis and oh, this is hard, guys. I mean, where do I start? I've <laughs> it is such a complex disorder and can be really difficult to understand. <laughs> I've spent like the last three years actually kind of, you know, studying this and trying to understand what it's about. It's not easy, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, okay? I'm gonna try to explain this in a very general way. Personality disorder is not one thing. It does not mean one specific type of behavior. It is recognized by uh, a way of thinking, a way of feeling, and a way of experiencing the world that deviates from the expectations of the culture and over a significant period of time, right? Because anyone can have periods in their life where they have troubles with their feelings or whatever. Uh, picture your personality. If we can put a personality into different kind of boxes, our personality is made up of all different kinds of factors, right? 
Um, there are so many different kinds of like um, tests that you can take, like personality tests or whatever, right? And they always put our traits in categories, like how open you are for new experiences, how introverted or extroverted you are, if you have a lot of like warm feelings, very happy feelings, positive, maybe you're quiet, maybe you're shy, maybe you don't like people, maybe you, you like to be alone. We all have different traits in our personality. This is basically what makes us us, like all of us. We all have a personality with different kinds of traits. More of that and less of that. And if you have a personality disorder, oftentimes it means that some of these traits will be way off the scale of what is normal. As I said, it's a way of thinking, feeling, and behaving that has to be kind of on the extreme end of the scale for it to be actually a disorder. You do not have a personality disorder just because you're very negative, like, or if you have like extremely strong feelings for something. That doesn't mean that you have a personality disorder. And it's something that deviates from the culture, right? So that, because we all have, all over the world, we have different kinds of things that we expect from each other in our culture. And what ex what is accepted and normal in my culture might not be normal in another person's culture in a different part of the world. So that is also very important to keep in mind. Of course, and because there are so many different personalities and so many different personality traits, that also means that basically every personality disorder is going to be a little bit different. To put this in a system, psychiatry operates uh, with categories or types of personality disorder. So, for instance, you might hear about a serial killer that has a personality disorder. They say that this person has um, antisocial personality disorder, might be, but even though it's the same kind of disorder that I have, we would be completely different. A person with um, so-called antisocial personality disorder, the most common traits are, uh, it would be maybe like you put yourself in many dangerous or risky situations and without even thinking about consequences for you or other people. And oftentimes maybe have total disregard for the rules we have in our society. This might be criminal activities. Oftentimes they have difficulty with empathy, so they might not be able to put themselves in another person's situation or what that person is feeling, or maybe just don't really have a guilty conscience. Maybe they just feel like, well, I was entitled to that, or I don't really care that much about other people. Uh, maybe they would have difficulty in keeping a job for long because relationships with other people might be hard for them to keep. Um, act very much on your feelings and be impulsive. Um, as I said, this is we're talking about a personality, so the differences are vast. In the same way, I can say that that would be a diagnosis that would be like the opposite of my diagnosis, even though it's the same category. Well, actually, with my, with my personality disorders, it's kind of uh, one of those examples that shows how complex it is because um, even though my main diagnosis is borderline personality disorder, I also qualify for another kind of personality disorder that is called obsessive compulsive personality disorder. And to me, what this means is, well, let's take the traits I have that has been really difficult to me um, that fits in the category of obsessive compulsive personality disorder is that I have and I've always had an extreme need for control. Like I'm a total control freak and not necessarily in a good way. Like 
if I feel like I don't have control over a thing or a situation, I can get anxiety and like act like a total horrible person. And if we were going out, let's say we were going out one evening and meeting some friends, I always had to know what friends, how many, where they were, where we were going. Uh, preferably, I would also know, like to know what route we're taking to get there. Um, if we didn't talk about it, I would have something uh, expected in my head. Uh, and all this, all this info I needed to have on beforehand. And if anything turned out to not go as I'd planned it in my head, I would be really, really anxious and I would get pretty upset. I am really surprised at how my then husband would like stay with me because I could get really, really like bitchy and angry or kind of like panicking because no, 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 that wasn't what you told me. You didn't tell me they were there or well, they've moved now. What the hell? This is not what we agreed on. We weren't supposed to go there. We were supposed to go stuff like that. And it is horrible. This is just happening. This is just how I react. And this is just my feelings, you know? It's not something I'm doing purposefully. It's not something I'm thinking about. It's just something that happens in my in my head, basically. It's just my emotions getting the best of me. Also, <laughs> what was really troubling for me was that I always set unrealistically high goals and standards for myself, but also for other people. So I remember, for instance, like uh, back in the time where I was a manager at a coffee shop, I would basically end up doing everything myself because I wanted to have control. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't delegate much because I wouldn't trust them to do it the way that I wanted it to be done. So I would work myself to death because I just couldn't handle that someone else would do the job for me, basically. Most of the time I can see myself now and see myself in the situation and know what, what's happening. I still get anxiety, a lot of anxiety, and if I feel like things aren't going the way I'm thinking in my head, I get anxious. So I do get a lot of anxiety and that's definitely something I'm working on. Like I love being creative and I love making art and drawing and stuff like that. But one of the things that's really hard for me is that my standards for myself are so high and they're so unrealistically high that I don't even dare to start to draw because I already know that it's not going to be good enough. Maybe I feel like I want to draw something, I have an idea in my head or anything like that. Then it just ends up with me not doing it. I would be too anxious to do it because I can see it all in my head. Like I'm starting and this and like that level and this level and that and and then I, it's not going to, it's never going to be as good as I want it to be and it just totally exhausts me and I get totally anxious and I just end up not doing it, not even trying to do it because by the time I actually sit down with the pencil or whatever, I've already convinced myself that I, I, I can't even do this. I really, really hate it. I wish I could just uh, relax, like tell myself that Jesus, you know, just... I know it's a good thing to practice and make mistakes and that's how you get better. And uh, of course, I know all these things. I'm a rational person, but that doesn't help on my feelings, you know, because my feelings are still there and my anxiety is still there and I can't just think it away, if you know what I mean. Let's say my head is my rational and my chest and my heart is my feelings. This connection is not always a good one. The other category that I also have struggled a lot with is the one called borderline personality disorder or emotionally unstable personality disorder. That's two names for same category. And this is mostly about your feelings and thoughts about yourself. 
and in the relationship with other people. And of course, all of us can experience difficulties uh, in our uh, self-image and uh, have difficult emotions. We all experience that from time to time. Borderline personality disorder is often recognized by that these feelings are consistently unstable over a long period of time. And it's, they're really intense and they also cause significant problems in my life. For instance, I have always been extremely worried and afraid of people leaving me, abandoning me, or that I would be alone. And remember, all this is something that happens subconsciously. This is not something you're necessarily aware of. This is like reactions, innate reactions inside of you or feelings that just happen as a part of your personality. Um, let's say I am, I am worried about being alone. I'm worried about people leaving me, people that I love would abandon me. So I would do anything to keep that from happening. I would really hold on to them. Maybe I would be really needy. Or this could also mean that I would actually push people away. That if I had a good friend or a relationship with someone and I felt like, okay, this is not going the way it should be going, I would instead just push them away and feel like the only way to save myself is to push them away, keep the distance in that way kind of save myself from the pain from the person leaving me. Instead, I would be the one who, who leaves first. You're having extremely intense emotions and they can change really, really quickly. Um, just like kind of in a day. I can, you can wake up and you can feel like confident and happy and by the afternoon you're like totally depressed and feel like the whole world is gonna end. Maybe you have a strong sense of who you are and what you want and what you want in life. But this significantly changes according to who you're with. It's also hard to keep a steady relationship with friends, uh, like romantic relationships. Um, the kind of feeling that you're trying to find your way, maybe, or fit in, or you're, you become kind of adaptive, kind of like a chameleon in a way. If you're in this kind of relationship, maybe suddenly you feel like, oh, but this is what I I'm supposed to do in life. I'm supposed to be a journalist because you're so inspired by that person or the people that you're with with this person or like the person you become in, in that relationship. Or maybe later when that relationship, maybe it ends and you meet someone else or you have some friends that are criminals or <laughs> are doing something completely different. Maybe you find out like, oh, this is really cool. Like this is me now, this is, this is what I wanna do. And also kind of it's in you to act kind of impulsively because oftentimes people who suffer from this have a lot of difficulty with their core, essentially. Like, who am I really? What am I really feeling? What are my true feelings? Who am I? That sense of like you have a feeling of kind of emptiness. And it's also very common to want to harm yourself. And it's really common to also suffer from anxieties, uh, depressions, um, eating problems. These problems are often linked to self-hate um, in a way that you feel like you're not good enough. And all these feelings that you have, they oftentimes will need an outlet. This extreme emotional pain will not go away. Like you, you need to place it somewhere. And that's why a lot of people suffering from this will maybe start harming themselves. It can be drugs, it can be uh, reckless behavior like driving dangerously, uh, it can be binge eating, it can be cutting or other th things. And people suffering from this oftentimes are suicidal or become suicidal at one point uh, because these feelings are really, really strong. It's hard living with. And it's uh, common to often feel lonely and to feel like you maybe, because you are you don't really feel connected in a real deep, long lasting way to other people. Um, and trust is also oftentimes an issue. So yeah, I have struggled. And this is just kind of breaking, breaking the surface like of what it's about, right? It's, it's complicated, it's really complex, and it is so deeply rooted in the way I feel and think about 
stuff. So the, it has definitely been hard for me. I didn't get this diagnosis until in my late 20s and that was only because I was so I was so far <laughs> gone. I was so deep in my depression and in my in my own head and in my misery and I actually um, I was suicidal. I all I thought about was that I was going to die. In one way or another, that was my plan, like I was going to die. And because I didn't want to live anymore, I couldn't handle it. This life was not something I wanted. That was my goal. Like that was my my certainty was that I'm going to die. And I've had depressions and anxiety and eating problems basically my whole life, but I just never I wasn't really conscious of it. Like it was just the way things were. And I just thought that, well, I'm probably chronically depressed and I didn't want to live with that anymore. I'd lived with that for so many years. It was just repeating itself over and over again. And I just couldn't handle it anymore. I tried to die purposely. After that, it was, something was triggered in the system so that I actually got help and I started seeing a psychologist on a regular basis and that was when I got my diagnosis and suddenly my life started making sense because I was like what <laughs> I have a freaking personality disorder that is extremely scary extremely it feels very stigmatizing and at the same time, it was like such a relief because now I knew that there was a reason. The life was hard for me for a reason. It wasn't just because I was lazy or just because I was like a weirdo. I actually have a disorder. Like I have, there is something like there's a reason. <laughs> and of course, this is um, this is hard like that is that is as i said it's a very serious diagnosis and it is something that takes a long long time before you get well it was really really good and really bad at the same time but i started getting help and that did help me a lot it has been a crazy journey basically my life has turned 180 degrees from where i was like three and a half years ago until now, it's like completely different. It's so weird. And I feel like I have changed a lot. I see myself now in a completely different way after I learned about this and practiced, practiced getting better. But yeah, it is hard. It is definitely hard. I have a lot of feelings and I am glad. Like I, I, I'm glad I have so much feelings. I learned so much about myself and of course about others i would say that i still struggle with a lot of these things but just not as bad anymore i'm definitely so much better now it is it is a really hard topic not because i'm ashamed because I'm not really anymore. I was ashamed in the start when I got this diagnosis. I, or like all of them, <laughs> I was, I was ashamed and I didn't want anyone to know about it. I felt really stigmatized and I experienced that, that stigma also when I was hospitalized. I have been hospitalized many times and during my stays at my, at the hospital, I also felt that like that is a diagnosis that's very stigmatized even among health professionals and that is not a good feeling even though i'm not out of it i'm kind of like on the other side of it in a way i'm not ashamed of it i know that it's not my fault it's not my fault that i'm sick it's not my fault that I have been sick for all these years. I'm not saying it's anyone else's fault either. It might not be or it might be. It's not really relevant. The only thing that matters is the fact that I am sick and I have been sick. And the only person eventually who can do something about it is me. 
It's my responsibility. It's my life. I am the only one who can change it. And I know that sucks. That really sucks. I didn't ask for any of this. I didn't do this on purpose. I didn't, maybe I didn't deserve it, even. <laughs> but ultimately, I am the only one who can make myself well. Of course, I can have support, I can have medications, I can have help, but ultimately, my life is my responsibility. So, I guess that's what it boiled down to for me. It's kind of like I was I, I made the decision that I want to live and if I if I want to live then I have to make a life for myself then I have to be responsible for that life you know I because my my plan was always that I was gonna die you know <laughs> I know it sounds weird it totally sounds weird but that was my plan for so many years and now I'm I've made the decision that I'm gonna live and I'm gonna have a life and that's really scary to have to take responsibility for that. I can blame so many other people for this shit I've gone through in my life. Of course, uh, there are other people who are, who are responsible for some of the things I've experienced and that I have to live with. Yes, they are responsible. And so what? For me, ultimately, it doesn't matter whose fault it is. The only thing I know is that I have to live with it and I have to go on. I have to find a way to live my best life. I think that is, I think that is the, the, the greatest lesson I have learned <laughs> during this past years in therapy and really going on this like journey of discovering myself. I have learned to take responsibility for my life. That's a huge one. <laughs> it is, but... And I'm not saying it's easy, because it's not. Life isn't easy. But... I'm glad now to be alive. Yeah. And I never thought I would be. I know what it's like to be on the bottom, like where you've dug yourself down into a hole that's so deep and black that there is no way out. Well, I know you can't see it, but there might be a way out actually. So, don't give up. Oh, I don't know if I have anything else to say. I feel like that was that was kind of the end of it, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, this turned out to be a really heavy one. I'm saying this because I believe in talking about this stuff. Because life is pretty crap from time to time. But we still need to talk about it. I believe that it gets a little bit easier that way. And that was only one of my diagnoses. <laughs> Can you believe that? Well, that was the heavy one, I think. Um, and also, as I said, like, it is so much more than that, too. It is it is a very complex and big and, you know, it is, yeah, it is what it is. I need to not speak for a little while. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go. If you're still watching at this point, thank you. All the messages and comments that I get from you from all over the world, it's so precious. It's extremely meaningful to me. To know that someone is watching this and appreciates my video, it all makes it worth it. I really hope you like this video and if you did, please uh, give it a thumbs up. <laughs> you know the drill. I hope you will subscribe to my channel. Feel free to, to make a comment uh, below or ask any questions if there's something you're wondering. I will try to answer you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.